Welcome back to 303. We are in Senior English A, and we are on page 260 together in your hymnal. And we are working with Sir Philip Sidney's classic sonnet 39 from Astrophil Stella. The, um, the challenge for us here now is to begin at 2B really quickly. Let's begin by pointing out that this is a sonnet. Notice, write it down, 14 lines, certain kind of rhyme scheme, iambic pentameter to follow, right? Uh, the poor man's wealth, the prisoner's release. Do you see it, line three? The poor man's wealth, the prisoner's release. Ba-bum, 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 ba-bum. That iambic, that ba-bum is an iambic foot, and then of course we have five of them. Ba-bum, 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 ba-bum. So also we have rhyme scheme. Do you see it? Notice line one ends with the word peace. Line three ends with the word release. Line five ends with the word priest. You see this? So in other words, we have a certain kind of rhyme scheme going on as well. All right. But now we want to point out another symbol that will be an integral part at level 2A of our reading, and that is sleep. This is one of the great poems of sleep. So let's write it down for those of us that are tired and would like to go to sleep. Let's go ahead and jot down at level 2A. This is going to be a poem about sleep. And the idea about why a frustrated lover might want to go to sleep. Let's take a look at the poem. Notice the opening lines. Let's just read the poem in its entirety. And then we'll see how well you're able to understand the poem without any help from me. Let's just see if you can figure out what the poem is about just from a single reading. Shall we? Let's read it together. Come, sleep. Oh, sleep. The certain knot of peace, the baiting place of wet, the balm of woe, the poor man's wealth, the prisoner's release, the indifferent judge between the high and low. With shield of proof, shield me from out the peace. Of those fierce darts, despair at me to throw. Oh, make in me those civil wars to cease. I will make good tribute pay if thou do so. Take thou of me smooth pillows, sweetest bed, a chamber deaf to noise and blind to light, a rose garland and a weary head. And if these things, as being thine by right, move not thy heavy grace, thou shalt in me livelier than elsewhere Stella's image C. Now, just to remind, Stella, of course, the girl that he loves. And already we can begin to kind of guess what's going on here. Why? Two questions. <laughs> Why does he want to sleep? Why can't he sleep? Right? For those of us who struggle with insomnia of any kind, the inability to sleep, we can obviously appreciate the call or the longing in this poem for the request for the repast of sleep. That is to say, uh, I wish I could sleep. Seniors often pointing out that as they get closer and closer to graduation day, they find sleep something less and less easy. Ball players will often point out they have difficulty sleeping the night before a major contest. Why? Because sleep has to do with resting the mind, not just the body. Let's take a look now and exegete these lines and see what he has to say. I've had many seniors that will write at 3B quite a bit about this poem because they can relate to it in so many ways. Let's take a look. Notice the opportunity or the opening first uh, line. Come sleep, which tells you with the exclamation mark, what does that tell you right away? Come sleep. In other words, what he's really saying is, please sleep. I beg of you, just please, please. Now, some students have pointed out, the worst thing you can do is to say, I hope I can sleep tonight, if you struggle with sleep deprivation. To sit in your bed or lay down in your bed and say, oh, just please, please let me sleep, is a primary way to make sure you ain't getting no sleep. The minute your mind starts saying, why can't I sleep, why can't I sleep, why can't I sleep? That makes our mind work even more, and therefore less sleep. Take a look at how he does this. Oh, sleep. And now it's almost like a tribute to sleep. The certain knot of peace. Why is it 
peace. Write down in your notes at level one. Why is it a knot of peace to sleep? <sighs> if you actually can sleep, then finally you can have some peace from the craziness of your mind. Go, 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 go. Thoughts, 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 thoughts. Questions, 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 right? If only I could get a little peace. Notice the next line, line two. The baiting place of wit. That is to say, the place for <sighs> relaxation, rest. Especially if your mind's been working hard, hard, hard. If I could only get to sleep, I could just kind of rest for a little bit. The balm of woe. Well, let's write this one down. What does that one mean? Balm, your side bar will tell you, it's like medicine. In other words, if you are really, really upset, the suggestion here is that sleep can at least make you feel better, right? Sleep, the balm of woe. The poor man's wealth. That's an interesting one. Write down what you think that one means. The poor man's wealth, no matter how poor you are, if you can get some sleep, you sleep just as well as a rich man. In other words, in sleep, we're all equal. Let's write it down as this. Along with death, sleep is the great democratizer. It makes everyone equal. When you're asleep, it doesn't matter whether you're worth a million bucks or one dollar, right? Because sleep is sleep. Notice the next one. The prisoner's release. Wow, I've taught this poem for many years and I've pointed out, what is it like to be in a cell day after day after day? not allowed out. You can't just get up and walk out of the room because you're in this cell. The only release is when your eyes shut and you drift off to sleep because in those moments, you're no longer in the cell. You're just as free as anybody on the outside. I've had students that say, I never really thought about that, but that's kind of true. The minute your eyes open, oh man, I'm back in the cell. Ugh. What would that be like year after year after year? And you don't get to get out except when you sleep. Of course, we know that one of the horrific problems for those who are incarcerated is what? The inability to sleep. They can't sleep. All kinds of reasons for that, from the mental state, the anguish, memories of the past, physical problems as well. Sometimes the noise, they can't sleep. If they can ever get sleep, the prisoner's release. Look at the next one. The indifferent, here your footnote tells you impartial is what we mean here, judge between the high and the low. One more way to say it. When you're asleep, nobody cares if you're one of the populars or you're one of the losers. Nobody cares if you're one of the happy versus one of the sad, the high, the low. Sleep is equal for everyone, if you can have it. And of course, the opening words come Sleep, please let me sleep. Look at the next one. With shield of proof, proven strength is your footnote. With shield of proof, shield me from out the priests. Here, of course, your sidebar telling you the crowd. In other words, uh, when I'm in school, I feel like I've got all these people around me drives me nuts with all the noise and the physical contact of all these people in the halls. If only I could just go home and go to sleep. I've had seniors that say in the late afternoon, dude, this is totally what I'm thinking right now. If I could just go home and take a nap. Ugh. Of course, some students will say, feel that all the way, all the time. All the time I feel that. I go home, I lay down. The minute my head hits the pillow, bing, eyes open. And I start telling myself, dude, go to sleep, you're tired, go to sleep, you're tired. Which, of course, makes your mind do what? Work harder, right? Uh, we're in a very interesting moment with this poet, right? Now, question, can you guess at all why he's unable to sleep? The answer, of course, because the name Stella is, on the, is in the last line. We know why. In other words, when you're in love and she's not responding to your text, makes it easier or harder to sleep? Self-evident, right? Notice, he says, of those fierce 
darts despair at me to throw. In other words, I'm having terrible thoughts. They're bugging my mind all the time. Despair. I feel like I have no solution to all my uh, feelings. Despair is like despair is like shooting arrows at him, and he says, "Sleep is like a shield that I can hold up, and then I don't have to worry about despair. Why can't I sleep?" Uh, oh, make in me. A lot of my students say, this is one of the classic lines we read in our senior year. Oh, make in me those civil wars to cease. Civil wars? Civil wars? Of course, we know what civil war is, right? The warring within a family or within a country, right? When everyone should be at harmony and they're not. That's called civil war. How can you have civil wars within yourself? <sighs> right? Should I do it? Should I not do it? Okay, I'm going to do this. No, no. Okay, I'm going to do it. No, no, no. Civil wars. Sleep is the one thing that can kind of put all of that to rest. Which obviously makes him say, Ugh! I wish, I wish somehow. I wish somehow. He says, I will good tribute pay if thou do so. <laughs> In other words, he's like making a deal with sleep. Hey, hey, hey. He'll just give me, get, get, give me an, a night of sleep. I'll pay. I'll pay. I'll pay anything. It's interesting. Oftentimes people have said, who have lots of wealth, I would pay a million dollars for one night of good sleep. Just one night. That's all I want. If I could just get one night of rest without always having my mind jacking on. Notice he says, Take thou of me smooth pillows, sweetest bed, a chamber deaf to noise and blind to light. I I've had students that are interested in this. Well, sleeping today is no different from what it was in 1600. Notice the things that are listed here that make for good sleep for you. Now, this is a very interesting 3B question. Like I said, this poem elicits a lot of 3B observations. We can start to ask some of them now. How about it for you? Do, does, does a pillow matter for you at sleep? See, I've had students that say, uh, you know, ball players especially have to travel and go on the road. They put them in a hotel and they say, can't do it unless I bring my pillow with me. Uh, for many years, I was a coach and it was interesting. We'd get on the bus and there would be players who had their pillow with them. Dude, what's up with the pillow? Oh, I can't sleep at night if I don't have my pillow. What is it about the pillow for those people who need it? Can you write it down? Is it the feel? Is it the smell? The texture? Is it just simply almost like the teddy bear we had when we were children that we had to sleep with because it gives us some sense of comfort? How about the next one? The bed itself. So jot down at 3B. Are you a hard bed sleeper? or a soft bed sleeper? What kind of bed do you like to sleep in that allows you to sleep, right? Look at the next one. How about this one? Quiet, quiet. See, I have some students that say, I gotta have this deaf to noise thing happening. I got, it's gotta be quiet. If it's not quiet, I can't sleep which is why I have a hard time sleeping in my house. There's always noise going on. Somebody's always got something playing or there's kids playing or there's noise of a kind. I can't sleep unless it's dead silent. Other students have said, dude, silence? No way I can sleep in silence. I gotta have noise. I either have to have the noise of a fan running or I have to have the noise of music playing or I have to have a TV. I've had students that say all night long, the TV just stays on. TV stays on all night long and I'm totally asleep, you want to wake me up, turn that TV off. You turn that TV off and bing, now I'm awake. Can't sleep without the noise. Notice here it's, I got to have silence to be able to sleep. What about the last one here? Blind to light. Now this is an interesting one. And again at 3B, you can jot down how this one works for you. For some of my students, they say, I got to have total darkness to sleep. I mean total darkness. I can't even have that little light coming in from under the door. I literally have to get up and put something down to, to cover that light. Cannot have any light at all. Other students will say, can't do the total darkness thing, man. The minute it's total dark in my room, I'm awake. 
I'm like freaking out or whatever it is. I've even had seniors that say, I sleep with the light on. On. Like the light on. I have to have a light on. Some of us will say, when I was young, I had to have a nightlight, and I still have to have a nightlight. I had to have a light on. So when I open my eyes, I can look around and see. Because if I open my eyes and it's total black, I can see absolutely nothing. Totally freaks me out. Some seniors actually sleep with their eyes covered because they need total darkness. Other seniors will say, dude, that would just, that would drive me nuts. If I opened my eyes and I couldn't see something, that would immediately freak me out. Notice what he wants. I love it, he says. I love to sleep in total darkness, which, by the way, makes it hard for some people who have, you know, that, that challenge of sleeping in the afternoon, right? Some people work all night long. That means they have to sleep during the day. And that is for them if they are... If they can't sleep with light, they got serious problems, right? They got to buy certain kinds of things to try and black out the light or whatever. Keep reading with me. A rose garland and a weary head. This rose garland thing here is very interesting. It's almost like a gift, we would say. Sleep <coughs> is a gift. Now, this is an interesting observation that my freshmen often do not and cannot understand that my seniors all get it. It's funny, when you ask freshmen, what's one thing you'd like to have right now? Almost never will a freshman say what a senior will say, I'd love to go home take a nap. Hilarious. Seniors will say this all the time. If you gave me the afternoon off, freshmen, pew, out the school they go, gabing, 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 gabing. They got all this energy, right? Drive seniors nuts. Seniors will often say, you give me the afternoon off, I'm going home. And I'm going to take myself a long nap. I am just chilling in my room. And freshmen are like, look at this. And they're like, what is wrong with you? What do you mean nap? Dude, you don't need a nap. Bing, bing, bing. Seniors are like, hey, 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 here in three years, come back and visit with me. When you're so tired that all you could just hope for is just a little bit of rest in the, you know, in the, uh, in the afternoon. A rose garland for a weary head. <sighs> right? And, hey, 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 pay attention. Did you see line 11? Did you see that colon there after the word head? In other words, it's almost as if the whole poem to this point has been nothing more than him saying, ah, sleep, come, sleep. Now all of a sudden we'll finish the poem. And if these things, as being thine by right, move not thy heavy grace, Thou shalt in me, livelier than elsewhere, Stella's image see. It's a very interesting, ironic observation. Hey, 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 he says to sleep. Sleep personified in the same way that the moon before was personified. He says to sleep, hey, hey, hey if, you don't, if you don't give me some sleep, give me some rest, then you're going to have the only thing that I have left, which is Stella's face image. In other words... Every time I get ready to go to sleep, I lay down, I shut my eyes. It's my girl's face I see. The very girl who won't return my text. Ugh. The very girl who is the most beautiful woman in all of the world. That's whose face I see. And that's why I can't sleep. Drives me nuts. Of course, he loves to see her face. So, yay, I get to see her face every time I lay down. Wait, no, I can't sleep because every time I lay down, I see her face. So he says this to sleep. He says, hey, hey, if you don't make a deal with me and give me some sleep, you're going to have to look at Stella's face too. It's a very interesting and ironic twist. All right, let's finish up. At level 2A, what would you say is the message of this? Is it that sleep is awesome? <coughs> Is it that the lack of sleep is terrible? The worst thing imaginable. We, of course, know that sleep deprivation is one of the ways to insanity, isn't it? If you want to make somebody go nuts, all you got to do is just don't let them hit REM sleep for several days in a row, and you can drive them crazy. Why? Because we need that restorative REM sleep, don't we? We know that. What's some other messages that you might be able to write down here? The idea that our sleep patterns are buried in very ancient kind of activities for us. 
from the time we were very, very young, for example, we started to learn how it is we like to sleep and what sleep means to us. A lot of students have written down it to a, you take for granted the most important things in your life, like sleep. When you're young, you can do it all the time, no worries. As you get older, you start to kind of become less able to sleep well. A senior said this the other day, and it's worthy maybe of your consideration. I used to sleep like a baby when I was in middle school. I, I did fine. But then I hit high school, and I started to be able to sleep less. What will it be like when I'm 50? So like, for example, will I hit a point in my life where all of a sudden I get to sleep like a baby again? In other words, is there more stress coming or less stress as I get older? And of course, if you talk to your parents or anybody who's an adult in your life, they will most likely tell you, doesn't get any less stressful. Sorry, I hate to break it to you, but when you hit 35, more stress, more stress. Of course, if you hang out with older people, they will often say this to you. You know, one of the reasons they like to talk about you know, stress is that whole idea of, of, of rest and stress and the relationship between the two. A lot of geriatrics will often report, I just don't sleep very well. You know, I don't sleep very well. I'm kind of not able to sleep. Of course, there's that whole thing about early risers. If you hang out around really old people, they will oftentimes be up at 4 or 5 in the morning. Dude, what is up with you getting up so early? A lot of them will confide, it's because I wake up. And once I'm up, I'm up. So I might as well get out of bed and let's go to work. Good. To be. Obviously, we have some symbolism in play here. Sleep is being as well personified, treated as if somehow you can have a conversation with sleep. Of course, we do have a very interesting bit of irony at the end of the poem. The reason why he can't sleep, we finally find out at the very end. And it is, of course, because Stella's face is always right there. In other words, his love for the girl and his frustration at his love for the girl. All right, let's go to 